So the first process is measuring and estimating liquid volumes. We will first estimate 10 ml of water to an empty cup. In this process, I use a cup and a cup full of water and a medicine dropper. I look at the lower level of the meniscus where it is the accurate measurement of the volume. And here's the result. Moving on to the next practice, we have to estimate 2 ml of water from a cup with 10 ml of water solution for 5 times. In this process, I use an empty cup and a cup with 10 ml of water and a medicine dropper. I have these compiled videos of me doing this process. The next practice estimates 5 ml of water from a cup with 10 ml of water solution for 5 times. I use 2 cups, one with 10 ml of water and one is empty, and we use a medicine dropper in order to transfer the liquid. practice of this process is estimating 10 ml of water from a cup with 10 ml of water solution for 5 times. We have 2 cups, one with 10 ml water solution and one is empty and we use a medicine dropper to transfer the liquid. The next common laboratory operation is transferring liquids. In this process, we will need a spoon, two cups, one is empty and one is filled with water. Why do we need to use a spoon in transferring liquids? It is to prevent spillage of water and to gain the maximum amount of water from one cup to another. As you can see in the video, there are no spillage in using spoon for transferring liquids. Our third process is called precipitation. In this process, we will need a glass of coke, milk, and a medicine dropper. We must be slowly and careful in pouring milk into the soda. The reaction creates a precipitate or solid matter that is more dense than the liquid, therefore sinking to the bottom of the glass. So the next process is called filtration, wherein we will need some fondo, cloth or cheesecloth, but I'm going to use a cloth right now because I do not have a cheesecloth. Next is we will need an empty jar or glass, and we will use a small spoon and a big spoon. So the small spoon will be used in transferring of liquids to avoid spillage of water. And the big spoon will be used to scrape the precipitation or the precipitate. Now let us poise the funnel and put the cloth on top of it and start filtrating.
there you can see the result. The next process is called the decantation. In this process, we will be using a spoon, a cup of water, and the filtrate. So simply put the water into the filtrate and shake it up or mix it up with a spoon. Later on, we will be able to see the precipitate settling at the bottom of the glass. There you can see that we can now easily separate the liquid from the precipitate through the process of decantation. Down to our last process, the evaporation, the process of separating the dissolved solid from the liquid solvent. In this process, we are going to use a butane stove and a pan, the filtrate, and one half tablespoon of salt and 50 ml of water. To start the process, we are going to turn on the butane stove, place the filtrate at the center of the pan, and mix it with a mixture of salt and water. The next thing that we will do is to wait for the liquid to evaporate, and we will be left by white crystals or what we call the residue. That is the process of evaporation. Thank you for watching.